Um, I'm in academia and I'm finishing up my dissertation and I'll be on the job market this summer and everyone will ask me kind of like, oh, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And I, you know, I just want to, I just want to do something great. I want to be somewhere, live somewhere awesome, but I don't have like well, that's a preconceived good. You see, notion of where but, that is. But this is exactly what we were talking about earlier. That's the only thing that the vortex can give you right now. In other words, I know I want it to feel good. I know I want to feel fulfilled. I know I want to be really good at what I do. I know I want it to be really fun. I know I want to feel expansive. I know I want to collaborate with others in a co-creative endeavor to take things further and further. I know I want to feel the financial remuneration of something that is very productive and very well paid. In other words, I know how I want it to feel. I want to feel energized by it and fulfilled and satisfied by it. And I want to feel eager and alive by it and and if you can if if you can hear from us that that not only is enough but that is the work to do right now then in because what causes people to start getting anxious is because they're trying to fill in the gaps before they have full view of them. We touched on this a little bit earlier and we didn't develop it as fully as we want to and you're helping us to do it here. In other words, through life you have, you have carved out all of those details. And by focusing on asking questions to which you don't have answers, you'll throw yourself out of the vortex and then you won't be able to feel or see the answers come into full view. But if you will focus upon the things that you can manage, which is the way you feel, think about how you want this new employment or occupation to feel, then you offer no resistance. So then you're in the vortex commonly on this subject as well as the subject of yoga that brings you in. And now, in the absence of resistance, those questions that we encourage you not to ask because it would keep you out of the vortex, you can begin to ask from inside the vortex and, and then things will come to full view for you. So I, I will know where I'm going? or Well, it will show up. You'll, okay. you'll, in other words, still haven't said it as well as we want to. Let's take another run at this. So imagine the vortex. It's like people want to talk about non-physical and we say you don't really want to talk about non-physical because to talk about non-physical through the physical format you force us into fairy tales to satisfy you because in the physical world you want to talk about what you can see and hear and so on and in the non-physical world we are not talking about those physical senses it's a vibrational interpretation that's utterly satisfying to us but you can't feel that kind of satisfaction in other words if we were to say to you for for example if we were to say to any of you we would like to show you how to feel happy for the rest of your life, but you'll also be blind and deaf. Most of you would say, I'd rather be able to see and hear and be unhappy than to be happy and blind and deaf. Now, wouldn't you? Most people would say that because, because they can't imagine being happy, blind and deaf. So it, we're, we're stretching you too far in the thought. So that was really good, by the way. <laughs> In, in this, in this, in this stretching you into the new thought. So, in a sort of similar way, as we ask you to find your way into the vortex, we're asking you to sort of let your physical senses be less important while your emotions be more. In other words, close your eyes and sit in a quiet place and and focus in a way where you can really feel good. Now, we've been encouraging meditation for many years. Meditation is a way to get into the vortex because when you quiet your mind, you stop thought. When you stop thought, you stop resistant thought. And when there's no resistant thought, the vortex takes you in. But then we have always said we would far rather find you in a state of appreciation than in a state of meditation. Because in appreciation, you're in the vortex too, but you're using all of your physical senses to enjoy your life fully. You with us? So, so... When we talk about getting into the vortex, we say, do anything that you need to do to keep the details of life from, from holding you out of the vortex. And when you stop doing those resistant things, the vortex will take you in. And once you're in the vortex, 
now and you've practiced the vortex longer so that being in the vortex is a steadier, more stable thing for you to do, then from inside the vortex, things will begin to light up. It's like the trail lights up. Mm -hmm. And you'll know it when you see it because you are so familiar with the good feeling of the alignment of the vortex that when the vortex then yields to you the people you will work with or the people you will work for or the, the specifics of what you're reaching for, you'll feel it because your enthusiasm for it will just be over the moon, you see. And it goes back to the very first game we were playing with you today about the difference between trying to make your hard, fast plans from outside the vortex and just relaxing and saying, I don't need to figure all of that out. It will be revealed to me. And you've heard all of these things all of your life. Have faith. Well, that's talking about get into the vortex. It will be revealed to you. Yes, it will. When you are a vibrational match to what you've been asking for, you'll see it fully. It won't just be something that you'll see that's leading you to where you want to go. The, the whole thing will will be there. The creation of it will come around you so fast. Don't you know people, haven't you heard people say and haven't you experienced some of it yourself where something that you've wanted for a long time is slow coming or not coming. It's like stubborn. It's not coming. It's not coming. And then something shifts in you. You don't really know how you did it. And all of a sudden, boom, there it is. And you say, where have you been all my life? I've been looking for you for a long time and most people don't understand the shift that they made but we will tell you every single time it's the shift from chronic resistance to a shift of not so much resistance. Mm -hmm. One of our favorite things that we enjoy seeing with people is that you fall in love with someone and because you give so much attention to this new experience of being in love all other aspects of your life get better too. Health improves, finances improve, and it's because this person distracted you from the things that were holding you resistant. But the difference in that conversation and this one is we don't want your vortex time to be dependent or reliant on any other person. We want you to just so get the vortex and so want to be in there and so capable and willing and effective at tuning yourself to that that you say to us, Abraham, I don't know where I'm going or when I'm going or how it's going to come about or I don't know the details of it, but I'm so looking forward to all of that. I think I am, yeah. I don't, I, I, I don't need to know because I trust the system. I know who I am. I trust the vortex. I trust the process of life. I expect life to go well for me. It's just going to be magnificent. I don't need the details. And so... so then you got to wonder, well then Abraham, why have you been teaching us scripting? Why have you been teaching us all of those things? And we say, because when you, once you've got this in the vortex thing figured out, then every single thing that you do enhances that, in other words, add the details to it. Start again. Every process that we've offered, and there have been many and many more coming. Every process, the processes that we offer are not because you need the process to create. Life causes you to create. You put it in the vortex. Step one, you ask, you put it in the vortex. Step two, source shores it up as we said earlier and holds the vibrational set point of it. Then step three is you have to find some way of getting into the vortex and lining up with what you've asked for. So. You've already done the creative work. So when you offer an affirmation, that just practices the vibration of allowing. When you pivot, that practices the vibration of allowing. When you, when you script, that just practices the vibration of allowing. Are you following? But if you will take this clear, clarification that we are giving you and you will just get in the vortex however way you can and then think about the details of how it will play out. It's really fun to think about details when you're in the vortex. It's fun. So I think I get, I mean, I know, so daily I pretty much get into the vortex for a particular amount of time, but is there anything? Well, you... we, would, we agree with you, and we would ask one more question, and Esther's been playing this game with us a lot. We've been asking her the question. We know that Esther can get into the vortex anytime she chooses, no matter what, because she's had the experience for all of these years of no matter what's going on, going to the podium, relaxing, 
and releasing with the intention of allowing her vibration to raise to match us. So she's been practicing that. So she can get out of the vortex in an instant, everyone can, by focusing on something unwanted. Because this wave that we talk about, when you know what you do want, you know what you don't want too. And it's just a matter of looking in one direction or, an, or another. But Esther's proclivity now is in the vortex. She spent so much time in the vortex that it's actually easier for her to be in it than out of it. And that's why when she's out of it, she resents it and anyone who could possibly be responsible even for a little bit of it in other words being out of the vortex is really an awful experience for someone who's been paying attention and who has practiced themselves into the vortex so what we are saying to you you said I think I spend a good deal of time in the vortex and we say we know that you do that is absolutely true so then the next question that you want to ask and Esther wants to ask is and how much how how capable am I of deliberately remaining there when I find myself there. That's the next powerful step because, because that's milking it, that's practicing the vibration of it, that's setting a chronic tone of positive expectation of life. And that's really, you see, we come to visit with you and all of you were pure positive energy before you came into these bodies and all of you are adding immeasurably to the expansion of the universe so we visit with you because we really want to call you into the vortex we really do but even as much as wanting to call you into the vortex we want you to understand how to get there we want you to know what it's all about and we want you to want to be there and we want you to live the majority of your life from inside the vortex we want you to be source energy in physical bodies in this environment because when you reach that understanding then you think it and it is and you think it and it is and that's the real time that we're asking you to live Jerry and Esther and Mike and Karen and many others spent some time in Australia the last two Decembers. And it was interesting to, to them. Esther especially was captivated at the idea that the time difference is so great that they cross the date line too. So now it is Sunday in Sydney. Saturday here, Sunday there. Weird. She would call the office from Sydney and say, we're living your future. <laughs> and it's really good over here. But, of course, that's, that's not accurate because even though it was Sunday in Sydney, or is Sunday in Sydney and Saturday in San Antonio, it's still now. Whether it is us expressing from the non-physical or you expressing from the physical it's all right now it's all converging right now and what's converging is the energy of the non-physical you and the physical you it's all converging right now so this real time that we're talking about is so life causes you to ask for something and if you're so practiced about the vortex in other words let's say that that you receive a phone call let's say you're in this seminar you're tuned in tapped in turned on you're feeling good you've found the resonance with who you are and you feel great and during lunch you receive an unsettling phone call well the phone call and let's say the phone call is about a problem so the phone call is going to take you out of the vortex it is but in the in the knowing what you don't want a solution is immediately shot like a rocket into the vortex so you were in the vortex you heard the problem the vortex spits you out because you can't hold the problem and the solution at the same time but as you hammered at the problem a solution was created and and exists there in the vortex now the question is are you going to stay out there with the problem or are you going to go in there with the solution? And if you've been practicing the get in the vortex no matter what, get in the vortex no matter what, then no matter what, you can get back into the vortex. So almost as soon as you heard the problem, you have access to the solution. The idea flows. You know just what to do. You know just exactly who to call. And that person is available because your timing is right on. And you know just the words to convey. And you convey the words in the most appropriate way. And you feel the solution wrapping itself around you. And then you can say, as we hear Jerry and Esther say on a really regular basis because of the expansive life that they are living, 
We are better for having had that experience than we were before it. Even though if you'd ask us ahead of time, we would have said, no, we can leave ourselves out of that.